well, 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 guys, you know my motto. I don't make believe, I make believers. I'm your gracious host, Drama1980, hailing from Columbia, South Carolina. I hope you're having a good day today, and if that's not the case, ask yourself why, because after all, happiness is an inside job. Did you hear me? I say happiness is an inside job, and it will always be an internal affair. Well, guys, we back today again with my man, TBA. This is a good showing, guys. Get your popcorn. Let's have a conversation. I'm going to call you to, to the screen, guys. Let's go. Let me get a caller from area code 678. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Miss Jones. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, hello, me and Mrs. Jones. What's on your mind? <laughs> okay, so let me first preface this with I love your show. Someone referred me you know, through a link and I have been listening to your videos and I think a lot of what you're saying is very true. Um, particularly about, you know, uh, women and relationships and things of that nature. But I will have to say though, I sense a sense of, it seems like you're bitter against women in their forties. I am a woman in my forties. I am a single woman. I was raised by my father. Um, I'm from the Midwest. West. I'm from Detroit. You know, I'm educated. I have a degree. But the thing about it is the women who are in my area and during the time that I came out of school, our parents, you know, really were like, you know what? Focus on your education. Don't worry about getting married. You know, you want to be able to take care of yourself. And I think a lot of that comes from them seeing pitiful pitiful black men frankly okay you know, let me uh, find out so a couple of you, things you here first of all okay you made a statement here and let's see if we can find out exactly what your justification for that is you made a statement of saying that okay. i strike you as quote bitter at women over 40 now bitter is a word right. that had okay be quiet bitter is a word that has a definition you can't just be some mm -hmm. ignoramus grabbing a word and using it out of context with no without its definition. So in the definition okay. of the word bitter, what is it that you have heard that sounds bitter? Well, first of all, in my opinion, when someone is bitter, when they speak, there is a harshness to it. That is uncalled for and unnecessary. Harshness so is like an opinion. Harshness is not a fact. Excuse Harshness me. is an opinion. It could be that you're just a very weak individual who, when you hear the truth, you're just so sensitive because it strikes you in a place you don't like that to you, the truth is just harsh to you. That could be a possible. Well, you could, know could what? That, could that actually that could be. Okay, thank you. So if that could be, then it may be you're just a weak person and that hearing the truth for the first time ever, you just interpret it as harsh because you've never actually had to deal with somebody telling the straight truth without trying to taint it or dilute it to spare your feelings. So it may just be that you're a bit okay. weak. You're probably a bit weak and fragile. And it's maybe time for you to actually take a look in the mirror and say, wow, <laughs> I've been kind of weak and fragile. And I mistake that okay. for okay. Uh, my weakness and my fragility because I've never had people talk to me honestly before. I've insisted that they lied to me My in my weakness and fragility fragility, I have become a person who's so weak that I interpret something as basic as truth to be, quote, harsh. Let's get to work. Guys, let's address what she said at first. She says that back in her time, her parents and all of them taught them that they need to go out and get their own. I don't see no problem with it, but the problem came in this feminism mindset you liberated uh you sexually free and all that that's the problem the government came in which is your sworn enemy not nothing that i said just look around you and then make your mind up for yourself okay cognitive dissonance is the word of the day most of y'all will see the problem and the problem looks too giganto to deal with so what you do is turn your attention back this way and say well it's you it's the black man <laughs> okay but there's nothing wrong with going out getting your own but the problem comes in 
whenever you get your own, you have this nastiness about you. You have this arrogance about you. You have this disdain for the black man all of a sudden. And you're losing on all fronts, not just one front, on all of them. I wonder why. I wonder why is that? And you have these women bragging about these degrees and all this stuff. There is nothing wrong with being a functioning adult. Do you understand? I guess that I'm being harsh too, right? Being a functioning adult is normal. That's normal stuff. There is nothing extraordinary about somebody going to college, getting a degree and buying a house. There is nothing spectacular about it unless it's something out of the ordinary. Like you buy a house in a certain neighborhood then that might be something that, you know, you might be like, you know what? That person is doing pretty good for themselves. But that's just on the financial side. But life has many facets And that's just one side See you think just because you have money That that money is just going to take you into the Glories of heaven Nah it don't work like that Not on this earth it don't And whenever you come with the truth People always will accuse you Of being harsh Now pay attention No matter how you package it you can come like Dr. Umar Johnson. You still see them attack him, don't you? You can see them come like Jason. They attack him. You can see them come like Tariq. They attack him. They can come like Kevin Samuels. They can come like myself. They can come anywhere you like it. Even preachers, that's pandering to women, most of them. And they still will have utterly disdain. And you will get nothing but vehement opposition from the women. So it doesn't matter how you package it or how you deliver it. You can come in love. I'm talking about just pixie dust and everything just falling out the background. You can come with roses in hand <laughs> and they still going to reject. It. And in my humble opinion, and this is my opinion. When a person is ready to receive the truth, it doesn't matter how it comes. Now that's my opinion That's my opinion When you are ready To actually have A listening ear And open up your heart To the truth It doesn't matter how it comes That's just my opinion And Jason is right Harshness is an opinion Simple as that Okay so <clears throat> You know the bottom line is That is my interpretation when I hear you speak. Correct, but you let's be very clear. Man. It's Who your feeling. In your high school years by the beautiful women, and then now that those women have aged, now you want to pay pay everything. But ma'am, the problem with that statement is men are not that's looking for women in their forties. That's the problem. Nobody wants you. You're in your forties. Nobody's competing so for you, you ma'am. Nobody's com no, ma'am. I'm happily single. Are you married? I'm happily single married? and rejecting females like what? you. I'm happily, I'm happily single also. No, you're I'm not, ma'am. You're, you're on my phone, phone angry. You're very much not happy not at angry. all. Yes, you are. You're literally on my First phone off, right now, raising your voice and screaming. You're as angry. You're the one who's bitter. So that's called projection. You're the one Jason, that nobody wants, ma'am. Jason, I don't think so. I'm on your line. Explain and I'm not on you. yours. How you come across. I'm not on your line. Why? You called me. You I would never call you. Form saying things about black women, number one, that have pulled the Look how loud forward, you are. Now she claims she's forward. not angry and look how loud and angry she is. Jason. She Dear is loud Dear and Dear angry Dear while Dear claiming she's Dear not. Dear her, she's such a happy nothing. person. Doesn't her voice sound but happy to all of you? Hey, everybody, doesn't she sound so happy and fulfilled? A point across, then you want to say that we're all loud, that we're all bitter, just like the typical pitiful black man that ain't never got no, excuse my French, 
See? This is what happens in when you're a size day, eight. When you're a size eighteen and men have ignored you into middle age, women. this is what happens. So now he's on a platform and he feels like a big man because maybe he got some money. And let me say this: No, maybe, uh, uh, ma'am. No, maybe. No, no maybe. maybe about it. Yes. If I might have a moment here to flex. It ain't no maybe, baby. No, I, I my money, my paper flex. is straight. I done heard you flex for the past six months. I've listened to your video. Oh, she is triggered now, isn't she? Have a woman in your life to add balance. Perhaps you should work on your personality so that you can get the quality of woman that you are. And let me see you get a woman that you're talking about a high class high value woman and then you come back on your platform and you show me how it's done would you like me to i would i would i want to see what your better half looks like and i'm pretty sure you're gonna probably have to buy her because at the end of the day you sound like a man who has been rejected who has Ma'am, why would why why would anybody care what a over forty overweight female thinks? <laughs> why would we why would we care what you think? So you have to resolve you have to resort to insult. Ma'am, that's not an insult. And no, that's, that's not an insult. That's a statement of fact. Listen. You called me up to complain yeah. about my 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 yeah. statements. You Why would know. anybody you, care? You, you, you asked me know. if I was single. Why would anyone care what you think? You You're over 40 and overweight. Ma'am, we're not going to argue you and you're not going to talk me. over the host. You have exhausted about. your entertainment ability. You asked me if I was single. Listen. I'm now saying you're over 40. Why does why would anyone care what an over 40 overweight female thinks? You know what? The bottom line is, ma'am, that's a simple question. Take that's a simple question from a child. You're walking. That is a simple question. One, and you think more highly of yourself, ma'am, but you're over 40 and overweight. Nobody cares what you think of yourself. This is what, what do you all see why she's angry? Let me tell you something. If I was 50, ma'am, if you're, you're off the line, understand something. Now, I'll, I want you all to be aware here. I her talking she's exhausted her uh her entertainment capacity but you all see i want you to understand now that was a that was really a good example that was really a good example of a few things first of all she said you're bitter about women over 40 that's a female who blew it in her 20s she blew it she had her chance. She had her opportunity to get it popping. She failed. She blew it. I find this to be true. It's women like this that see a man that's put together. The men that they desire. And they will have utterly disdain for you. For no reason at all. You can feel it. The guys that know, know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't have to be bothering anybody. You can be treating them fine. You can walk into a restaurant. Black women will give you this, this ugly, contentious look. I have actually had conversations with women. And the first thing that they would say after having a conversation with them, oh, I thought you was bougie. What you mean bougie? Because I carry myself with confidence, they can't stand that. Now, family, why is that? Why do they hate confident men? It's the question. Men that will stand up upright, men that stand on business, men that will tell you no, men that ain't grappling and, and, and begging. Oh, it's a new day, guys. Women that's over 40, I noticed something. You don't never warn the young women. About the pitfalls in this sunken place. You always try to encourage them to take the same path. And that is just next level, just evil. 
You know that path don't work. You know the path got pitfalls and trap doors in it, but yet you don't say anything. You want the women to take the same path that you took because after all, misery love company, right? Instead of you telling them, say, girl, I thought this, but it's not like that. Men are not like that. This is what men want. Listen to me. Because most men will tell you exactly what they want, but most women don't want to placate. They don't want to submit to that. See, it's women like this that keep the cycle perpetuated. Keep it going. Keep it going. And everybody wonder why everything is in the toilet bowl. Because of stuff like this. Because truth is not welcome in an empire of lies. Let me say that one time. Truth is not welcome in an empire of lies. Because once you start shining light on the lies, then everybody's life is elevated if they accept the truth and put it into practice. But you, on the other hand, that you done made these bad choices and now you reaping the fruits of your bad choices, now you are left behind. And most people don't like that. Did you just hear what I said? You better wind that back. Most people don't want you to seem as though you're doing better than them. That's why they would tell you, girl, ain't no man gonna tell me what to do, but she ain't got nobody. She got kids living in the house by herself, struggling. While you over here got you a man that stand on business and doing the right thing, even though you might not like some of the things about him because there's no perfect people walking the face of the earth. No perfect people by any means, man or woman, no perfect people. But you have a man that's solid. And you have to understand when you're winning, ladies, you better get these women out your ear. If you don't, you go drink from the cup of misery just like she is. Can somebody hear me talking? You gonna drink from the cup of misery if you lend your ear to these fools out here. I'm trying to tell you, when wisdom come in, lend your ear to wisdom instead of the foolishness. Because after all, you have to look at their fruits. What type of fruits do they have? Rotten fruits with bugs on it. Is that the life that you wanna live? Do not be a prisoner of your own mind. I'm telling you, do not be a prisoner of your own mind. You have to clean yourself from this foolishness. Listen at this woman talk. Do this sound like a woman that you want to get advice from? She said she happily single. Do you want to be single or do you want a man with a family? A head of household. Nobody is talking about abuse. Let me make that abundantly clear. I'm not talking about beating up nobody. I'm not talking about you better be home in 15 minutes after work and all this old stuff, even if you work or you might not work. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about not having an opinion on matters. That's not what I'm talking about because a woman like this will go from one extreme to the other. It's never no balance. My wife have an opinion. And I would sit there and listen to her opinion. But if I say, well, baby, I don't think that's a good idea, though. Because the timing, the timing is not correct. Now, if she can't trust my judgment, why are we together? Because after all, if anything goes down, whether it be in this house or whether it be in the public, I have to protect her, right? Am I right about that? Can anybody challenge that? I have to protect my wife. So in other words, you're going to have to come up under my leadership. And if you deem me as being insufficient, you don't need to be with me. We don't need to be together. And we're not going to be together. Because judging by my track record, God told me, I didn't know, I'm about to heat up. Judging by my track record, you can look at the things that I have accomplished around me. I don't even have to say anything. Didn't I pick you up? Didn't your life become easier? Didn't you get more creature comforts? Didn't your finances get better? Didn't I help you with your self-esteem? See, a man help a woman with a lot of stuff. See, most people just relegate it to just finances. Finances play a major role now. Don't get it twisted. You heard me. Finances play a major role, but they many facets to life. Many facets. It's multifaceted. Like a diamond, you hold it up in a light. You see colors from this. You look this way. It's a dip. You understand where it's coming from. A man helps a woman in so many areas. 
But y'all have been listening at these feminuts and these feminazis, and, and it got you all convoluted. It got you in a conundrum. And now your life has become tumultuous and somewhat you in a kerfuffle, as they say. You confused. You befuddled. Shall I continue? But ladies, you better listen at your men. You better get a man that's worth a poop, okay? Because these women can't hold you at night. These women ain't paying for no cars or no houses for you. The only thing they want to do is go out some way and shop and want to go to the club at 40 plus years old. Is that the life you want? Talk about a girl trip. She can't make you feel the way that I can. Oh, God, I better go. I better get out of here, guys. Tell me what y'all think about the video. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Come on back, guys. Shout out to Jason Black. He always give good content, good advice, and it's just rock, rib, solid advice. If you don't like it, if it's harsh in your humble opinion, well, just don't listen. But guys, until next time, peace. And remember, there is more.